Welcome to Andy's How I Did It channel. Today I'm going to show you what we replaced our factory EV charger with and how I resolved two problems I've had with EV chargers. The charger that came from the factory was this little 12 amp charger that took at least eight or nine hours for it to charge. So we decided to buy a new one to speed up that charging time. The charger was a juice box level two 15 kilowatt charging station, but it was the base edition with no display whatsoever. It did come with the J1772 32 amp 25 foot output cable, but eventually it died. So I contacted Bouge RV to see if they let me take their latest level two EV charger for a spin. They shipped it, it showed up from Amazon in two days. This charger came in this really nice case and it was all coiled up with zip ties around it. I'm gonna link to this charger down below and in just a second, I'm gonna tell you about one of the potential issues that you may have with this and what you need to do to resolve it if that issue should arise. This is your standard 14-50P 50 amp four prong plug that looks very similar to what you would use to plug into your dryer outlet. Even though you need to install a 50 amp circuit for your dryer, I believe that this charger only uses 32 amps. They provide you with the J1772 plug and a 25 foot charging cable that should reach from the back wall all the way to the end of your car for any type of electric vehicle. It does come with a one year warranty. One of the problems that we had with our previous charger is that there was a short in the 25 foot cable that came with it. I took the cover off to look for burnt parts and I never found anything, but again, there's no display on that. So I had no idea what the actual problem was with it. I just know that if you bent or twisted parts of the cable in certain ways, it would start working. And if you bent it again, it would stop working. While most of the statistics of this new charger are are very similar. One of the great features that this thing comes with is the ability to have over voltage, overheat, and over current protection on a display. So it will tell you when any of those events are happening. I did add a 50 amp circuit in our wall. I'll link to some of those items below so that you can put one in yourself if that's something that you're thinking about doing. It's always a good idea to have a qualified electrician, but it's not that difficult of an ad if you know what you're doing. So let's go ahead and plug this thing in for the first time. We're plugging in this 50 amp circuit. As you can see, it lights up and it starts with zero kilowatts per hour charge because there's a charging meter that shows you as you charge how much charge your level two charger is putting out. I simply took some zip ties and zip tied the charger to a shelf that I had and then immediately went to go plug the charger into the car for the first time so we could see how quickly this new 32 amp charger would charge. We're supposed to get 7.2 kilowatts per hour. And let me tell you, during this charge, we received every bit of that. It actually charged the car in two, two and a half hours. We only have 20 to 23 miles of range on a single charge on this car. Now, if you scroll through Amazon, you'll see a ton of level two EV chargers. And I was just scrolling through to look at some of them, but this one is the most cost efficient one that you can buy and it ships very quickly. So it was somewhere in the $350 range and for a 32 amp level two charger, that's actually a pretty good price. It comes with a display that shows you voltage and amperage and the actual temperature of the device while it's charging. It comes with this really nice case that you can store everything in if you want to take it with you. And we're done charging the first charge. We're gonna take it out for a test drive and then come back in and recharge it once again. But I wanna talk about one of the issues that I had with this charger. And as you can see there, the charger looked dead at one point. I went back in and unplugged it and replugged it in. It turns out what happened is it was either an over voltage during a storm or an overheat situation. This charger does turn off itself at 122 degrees Fahrenheit. It's in the instruction manual. If that happens, all you have to do is pull the power on it after it's cooled down and plug it back in. It will reset itself and continue working. Unfortunately, you need to look at it every time you plug it in to make sure that it started charging and that it wasn't in some kind of power trip or overheat situation. I'm gonna go ahead and link to this charger down below. If you have any problems or anything with it, feel free to leave a comment and let me know about it. I'll see if I can answer it and help you out. Again, I really do like this charger. I think it was a great addition. It's a great replacement for the level two EV charger that we had. It charges my car very quickly and I'm really happy I have it. I've got some more How I Did It videos coming up, so feel free to like and subscribe if you like this kind of content. Thanks for watching.